In the develop schedule process, we introduced a tool and technique called critical path method, also known as CPM. This technique is used to help schedulers determine the longest path of activities, the shortest possible project duration, and the level of scheduling flexibility that exists. In this module, we will examine the mathematics behind this technique. The goal of critical path method is to use the network logic determined during activity sequencing and the estimated activity durations to find the path of project activities with the longest duration. In the example pictured, the path of task A, B, D is longer than path A, C, D. Once the critical path has been determined, it helps the project team understand the shortest possible duration. Since activities A, B, D must be done in sequence, the project cannot be completed any faster than it will take to complete this path of work. So by finding the longest required path, we can find the shortest possible project duration. Activities not on the critical path will have some scheduling flexibility. In this example, a delay in activity C does not necessarily lead to a delay to the project. As long as it finishes before activity B, it should not affect the start of activity D or the finish of the project. It is also worth noting that in most applications, critical path method will not account for potential resource limitations. Network logic should be the only driver since resources can always be added. While most modern scheduling tools will automate the calculation of critical path, it is useful to understand how the technique works so that you can troubleshoot conflicts and rescheduling needs. We will explore this method using a schedule network diagram as covered in the sequence activities module. We will look at each activity or node to determine four key pieces of information needed to calculate the critical path using two steps, a forward pass and a backward pass. Our first step, the forward pass, will be used to find the early start and early finish for each node on the network diagram. Early start represents the earliest an activity can possibly begin based on all of its predecessors. For example, if our node depends on an activity that ends on the 10th day, our node's earliest possible start will be the 11th day. Early finish represents the earliest an activity can possibly finish. This will be based on the early start of the node and its duration. It can be calculated using the formula early start plus duration minus one. For example, if our node has a duration of five, we can add five to 11, which will give us 16. Since the task will not finish at the beginning of the 16th day, we will subtract one, indicating that the task will finish at the end of the 15th day. This will influence the early start of all successor activities. Once we have found the early start and early finish for all nodes, the forward pass is complete. Next, we will perform the backward pass to determine the late finish and the late start for each node. Late finish represents the latest an activity can finish without affecting the planned project completion date. This can be thought of as a procrastination date. If I had to finish an activity at the latest possible moment without causing delay, what would it be? Likewise, late start represents the latest an activity can start without affecting the planned project finish date. Late finish will be the end of the day prior to the earliest late start of its successors. In our example, 
the late finish of activity X's successor is the beginning of the 20th day. So activity X must be completed no later than the end of the 19th day. Late start can be calculated by subtracting the duration from the late finish and adding 1. In this example, we will take 19 minus 5 and add 1, which gives us 15. Looking at activity X, it seems that the earliest it can possibly begin is the 10th day. However, it can start as late as the 15th day without causing the schedule to overrun. Now let's solve an entire network diagram. We will begin with task A. Since it occurs based on the start of the project, the earliest it can possibly begin is the first day of the project. We will use our formula to calculate the early finish. The early start of A, 1, plus the duration, 4, minus 1, equals 4. Basically, A can begin as early as the first day of the project, and the earliest it can end is the end of the fourth day. Since task B depends on A, it cannot start until after A's early finish date, or the beginning of the fifth day. Using our formula, 5 plus 5 minus 1, the early finish is 9. Since task C depends on B, it cannot start until after B's early finish date, or the beginning of the 10th day. Using our formula, 10 plus 3 minus 1, the early finish is 12. The next node on this path is task H. Since H has two predecessors, we will wait to calculate its early start until both paths have been completed. Let's move down to task D. This task can begin as soon as the project begins, so its early start will be the beginning of day one. Using our formula, one plus three minus one, the early finish is three. Since task E depends on D, it cannot start until after D's early finish date, or the beginning of the fourth day. Using our formula, four plus nine minus one, the early finish is 12. Task F also depends on D, so it cannot start until after D's early finish date or the beginning of the fourth day. Using our formula, four plus six minus one, the early finish is nine. Task G has two predecessors. Since both must be complete before G can begin, we will use the later of the two before we can begin G. So G's early start will be day 13. Using our formula, 13 plus 2 minus 1, the early finish is 14. Now we are ready to find the early start for H. Again, it has two predecessors. H must wait for both to be complete. So its earliest start will be the beginning of the 15th day. Using our formula, 15 plus 2 minus 1, the early finish is the end of the 16th day. We have now completed our forward pass. Based on the durations of all paths, we have found that the earliest we can possibly finish the project is the end of the 16th day. Now we must use backward pass to find the late finishes and late starts helping us to determine scheduling flexibility. The purpose of the backward pass is to find the latest that each activity can begin and end, still allowing us to finish the project as a whole in its optimal, fastest possible duration. In our forward pass, we determined that the fastest possible duration for this project is 16 full days. 
we will begin with task H. Since it is the last task of the project, the latest it can possibly finish is the last day of the project, or the end of the 16th day. We will use our formula to calculate the late start. The late finish of H, 16, minus the duration, 2, plus 1, equals 15. Basically, H can begin no later than the 15th day of the project, and the latest it can end is the end of the 16th day. Now let's look at task C. Since task C is a predecessor of H, its late finish will be based on the late start of H. If H must start no later than the beginning of the 15th day, then C must finish no later than the end of the 14th day. Using our formula, the late start will be the late finish, 14, minus the duration, 3, plus 1, giving us a late start of 12. Since task B is a predecessor of C, its late finish will be based on the late start of C. If C must start no later than the beginning of the 12th day, then B must finish no later than the 11th day, so its late finish will be 11. Using our formula, 11 minus 5 plus 1 gives us a late start of 7. If B must start no later than the beginning of the 7th day, then A must finish no later than the end of the 6th day. Using our formula, the late start will be 6 minus 4 plus 1, giving us a late start of 3. Now let's calculate the bottom two paths. Since task G is a predecessor of H, its late finish will be based on the late start of H. If H must start no later than the beginning of the 15th day, then C must finish no later than the end of the 14th day. Using our formula, the late start will be the late finish, 14, minus the duration, 2, plus 1, giving us a late start of 13. Both E and F are predecessors of G, so they will both have late finishes of 12. We can find the late start of E using our formula. The late start will be 12 minus 9 plus 1, giving us a late start of 4. The late start of F will be 12 minus 6 plus 1, giving us a late start of 7. Now we have to find the late finish of D. This can be tricky since it has two successors. Task F can start no later than day 7, and task E can start no later than day 4. Since we do not want to delay the project, we will have to finish D before both of these dates. Therefore, the latest we can finish D will be the end of the third day. That way neither the late start for E or F will be affected. We can calculate the late start of D using our formula. 3 minus 3 plus 1 gives us a late start of 1. We have now completed our backward pass. We have found that some activities have some flexibility to start later than their earliest possible start date without delaying the project completion, while other activities have no such flexibility. We can calculate this flexibility by finding the total float, sometimes known as slack, to help us determine the critical path. To find the total float for each activity, we will simply subtract the early start from the late start. We will go in alphabetical order. For task A, we will take 3 minus 1, so the float is equal to 2. For task B, we will take 7 minus 5, so the float is 2. 
For task C, we will take 12 minus 10, so the float again is 2. For task D, we will take 1 minus 1, so the float is 0. For task E, 4 minus 4 is a float of 0. For task F, we will take 7 minus 4, so the float is 3. For task G, we will take 13 minus 13, so the float is 0. For task H, we will take 15 minus 15, so the float is 0. If we highlight the path of activities that has a 0 float, we will find that path D, E, G, H is the path with the longest duration. This is said to be the critical path, meaning that if any one of these activities is delayed, the project completion will immediately be delayed. Activities with float have a greater level of flexibility. For example, activity F can be delayed for up to three days before the project completion date would be affected. Activity A, B, and C each have a float of two meaning that any one of them could be delayed a day or two before affecting the project completion date. However, keep in mind that since they are on a common path, a delay in A will decrease the float of B and C. Project schedulers can use this information to help make decisions when allocating resources, or considering other trade-offs regarding the project schedule. Once project execution is underway, the project management team must recalculate the critical path during the controlling processes, as it may change as activities are finished early or late. For the exam, you will need to be prepared to identify the critical path when presented with a network diagram. You may also be asked to simply identify the float of a single activity node. Further, you may be asked to solve for the critical path or float based on a table of data rather than a network diagram. For these types of problems, you'll have to draw the network diagram manually, then execute the steps in this lesson. We will practice this in a separate module. We hope that you enjoyed the video. If so, please click like, subscribe to our channel, or leave us a comment. If you are interested in more training, you can sign up for our online PMP exam preparation course, or you can take it for a test drive by registering for our free trial.